My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today's video is und uh, entitled Understanding Beta Blockers. So today I want to talk to you about a class of medicine that many of you may have heard of or perhaps are even taking called beta blockers. They have names like bisoprolol, atenolol, nebivalol, metoprolol, propranolol, sotolol. So when you hear of a drug which ends with the uh, letters O-L-O-L, olol, then it's probably very likely to be a beta blocker. Beta blockers are used for a wide variety of conditions from high blood pressure to heart rhythm issues, from angina to heart failure, from anxiety to an overactive thyroid. But what are they really and what do they do? And what should you be aware of if you're on them? So let's start gently. Okay, what do beta blockers actually do? To understand beta blockers, imagine your body has a set of accelerator pedals that respond to stress hormones like adrenaline. These hormones prepare your body for a flight or fight response. They will raise your heart rate, tighten your blood vessels, increase your blood pressure, all to get you ready to face a challenge. Now for many people, especially those with heart disease, or fast or irregular heart rhythms or heart failure or high blood pressure, this constant accelerated state can be harmful. And that's where beta blockers come in. Beta blockers will gently block some of the effects of adrenaline on the heart and blood vessels. So the heart beats more slowly, more gently, and with less strain. The blood pressure drops, the rhythm of the heart becomes steadier, and for many people, there's a calmness that settles. What are beta blockers used for? Well, they're incredibly versatile. Common uses include high blood pressure, so they lower the heart rate, they can bring the blood pressure down that way. They can be used for angina. In angina, there's a lack of blood getting to the heart because there's a narrowing in one of the blood vessels. So if you slow the heart down, the heart doesn't need as much blood, and therefore that relieves the discomfort that comes from the suffocation of those heart cells which are not getting the blood. Slow the heart down, more blood can get through. Heart failure. In heart failure, they're very useful and not only do they make quality of life better, but they can actually prolong life. So in heart failure, the heart is weak, it's struggling to pump blood out, therefore you get sympathetic activation, you get more adrenaline in the system and that makes everything worse. Beta blockers will blunt the effects of adrenaline and allow the heart a little bit of respite and may even allow it to recover if the cause of the heart failure is a reversible one. They're very good in controlling irregular heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, not only do they reduce the chances of atrial fibrillation coming on, but they also slow the heart down when the atrial fibrillation is actually happening. They're not so good in vagal atrial fibrillation, but other forms of atrial fibrillation, they can be quite effective. They are used after heart attacks to help the heart heal. They can be used for migraine prevention, anxiety, especially for physical symptoms like palpitations or tremors, and even thyroid overactivity. What might you feel if you're on a beta blocker? Well, that varies from person to person. Some people feel more relaxed. They notice their heart no longer races as much, their palpitations calm down and their chest pains ease. But others may notice feeling a little bit more tired or slower. In fact, in extreme cases, people often come to me and say, I feel like a zombie. So in an extreme case, but that gets better if you take the beta blocker off. They may complain of slight dizziness, especially when standing up quickly because beta blockers lower the blood pressure. Patients may find that they get cold hands or feet. They may complain of strange dreams or sleep disturbance. They may also complain of low mood in rare cases. And in some patients, the heart rate may feel too slow. That's why beta blockers aren't for everyone and why the dose needs to be tailored to you. You are not a number, you are not a guideline, you are a person and therefore the dose has to be one that suits you the most and that is to be done by your doctor in partnership with you. Who should be cautious? Well, there are some people in whom beta blockers are used cautiously or avoided altogether. Those with asthma, 
Certain beta blockers can definitely worsen the breathing and asthma. Those with slow heart rhythms, because beta blockers slow the heart down, so if you've already got a slow heart or a slow heart rhythm, then you want to avoid a beta blocker. Those prone to low blood pressure or fainting, they lower the blood pressure. If you've already got low blood pressure, then they'll make that worse. And in people with severe depression, although this link is still debated. If you're ever unsure, it's important not to stop the beta blocker suddenly, but do speak to your doctor. Some beta blockers are best stopped gradually, so you may have to down, down titrate the dose for a few days, half the dose for a few days, and then quarter the dose for a few days, and then stop altogether. But do so only after you've discussed it with your local doctor. So are beta blockers safe? Yes, in the, in the right person at the right dose, they're amongst the safest and best studied medicines we have in cardiology. In general, any side effects you have are reversible. You stop the medication, the side effects will go away. They don't fix the underlying problem, but they buy time. They reduce stress on the heart. And in many cases, they improve quality of life and help prolong life, particularly in heart failure. Sometimes patients feel uneasy about being on a medication for life, but here's how I'd like you to think about it. If your heart were a little boat and the storms of life kept rocking it, beta blockers are like an anchor, not stopping the wind, but giving your boat the stability to ride it out. So I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear your comments once again. Thank you so much for all the support you give me. I really, really appreciate it. All the best.